Hi guys, I'm back. Today I'm going to read 1 Samuel 6 to 10, Proverbs 20, and Psalm 108. Let's get started. 1 Samuel 6 to 10. The ark of the Lord had been in Philistine territory for seven months. The Philistines called for the priests and for those who practiced evil magic. They wanted their advice. They said to them, What shall we do with the ark of the Lord? Should tell us how we should send it back to its place. They answered, If you return the, God of the ark of the God of Israel, don't send it back to him without a gift. Be sure you send a guilt offered to their God along with it. Then you will be healed. You will find out why his power has continued to be against you. The Philistines asked, What guilt offering should we send to him? The advisors replied, There are five Philistines among us, so send five gold rats. Also send five gold bottles of the grass in your body. Do it because the same plague has struck you, and you will lose a life. Make models of you rats of the rats and the grass there to show you the country. Give honor to Israel's God. Then perhaps his power will no longer be against you, your gods and your land. Why are you stunned as Pharaoh and the people of Egypt were? Israel's God was very hard on them. Only then did they send the Israelites out. Only then did they let them go on their way. Hang on a second. Now then, get a new cart ready. Get two cows that have just been, that have just had calves. Be sure the cows have never pulled a cart before. Tie the cart to them, but take their calves away and put them in a pen. Then put the ark of the Lord on the cart. Put the gold models in the in a chest beside the ark. Send them back to the Lord as a guilt offering. Send the cart on its way. But keep an eye on the cart. See if it goes up toward Beth Shemesh to its own territory. If it does, then it's the Lord who has brought this horrible trouble on us. But if it doesn't, then we will know it wasn't his hand that struck us. We'll know it ha happened to us by chance. So that's what they did. They took the two cows and tied the cart to them. They put the cows in a pen. They placed the ox of the Lord on the cart. They put the chest there along with it. The chest held the bottles, held the gold bottles of the rats and of the growth. Then the cows went straight up toward Beth Shemesh. They stayed on the road. They were moving all the way. They didn't turn to the right or the left. The Philistines rulers followed them all the way to the border of Beth Shemesh. The people of Beth Shemesh were working in the valley. They were gathering their wheat crop. They looked up and saw the ark. When they saw it, they were filled with joy. The car came to the field of Joshua of Beth Shemesh. It stopped there beside a large rock. The people chopped up the wood the car was made out of. They sacrificed the cows as a burnt offering to the Lord. Some Levites had taken the ark of the, of the car. They had also taken out the chest that held the golden bottles. On that day, the people of Beshemesh offered their offerings to the Lord. They also made sacrifices to it. The five Philistine rulers saw everything that happened. On the same day, they returned to Ekron. The Philistine sent gold bottles of growth as a guilt offering to the Lord. There was one each for Ashdod, Gaza, Ashkel, Gath, and Ekron. They also sent five gold bottles of rats. There was one for each of the four seed towns that belonged to the five rules. Each of those towns had high rules around, around it. The towns had also had country villages around them. The Levites set the Ark of the Lord on the large rock. This is the day the Lord is a witness to what happened there. It's in the field of Joshua of Meshemesh. Hang on a second.
But some of the people of Beshabesh looked into the Ark of the Lord. So they struck them down. He put 70 of them to death. The rest of the people were filled with sorrow. That's because the Lord had killed so many of them. The people of Beshabesh said, The Lord is a holy God. Who can stand up in front of him? Where can the ark go to from here? The messengers were sent to the people of Kiris Jericho. The messengers said, The Philistines have returned the ark of the Lord. Come down and take it up to your town. Chapter 7. So the commander of Kiris Jericho came and got the ark of the Lord. They brought it up to a bit of dad's house on the hill. They sent his son Elzaph to guard the ark. The ark remained at Kiris Jericho for a long time. It was there for a full 20 years. Hang on a second. Then all the Israelites turned back to the Lord. So Samuel spoke to all of the Israelites. And he said, Do you really want to return to the Lord with all your hearts? If you do, get rid of your gods. Get rid of your false gods. Get rid of your female gods that are named Ashtoreth. Commit yourselves to the Lord. Serve him only. Then he will save you from the power of the Philistines. So the Israelites put away the statues of God that were named Baal. They put away the statues of female gods that were named Ashtoreth. They served the Lord only. Then Samuel said, Gather all of the Israelites together at Mizpah. I'll pray to the Lord for you. When the people had come together at this part, they went to the well and got water. They put it out and in front of the Lord. On that day, they didn't eat any food. They admitted they had sinned. They said, We've sinned against the Lord. Samuel was serving as the leader of Israel at Mizpah. The Philistines heard that Israel had gathered together at Mizpah. So the Philistine rulers came up to attack them. When the Israelites heard about it, they were afraid. They said to Samuel, Don't stop crying out to the Lord, our God, to help us. He prayed that he will save us from the power of the Philistines. Then Samuel got a very young lamb. He sacrificed it as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. He cried out to the Lord to help Israel. But the Lord answered his prayer. The Philistines came here to attack Israel. At that time, Samuel was sacrificing the burnt offering. But that day, the Lord thundered loudly against the Philistines. He threw them into a such a pain that the Israelites were able to chase them away. The men of Israel were out of Mizpah. They chased the Philistines all the way to a point below Mizpah. They killed them all along the way. Then Samuel got a big stone. He set it up between Mizpah and Shed. He named it Ebenezer. He said, The Lord has helped us every step of the way. So the Philistines were all under Israel's control. The Philistines did attack their territory again. The Lord used his power against the Philistines as long as Samuel lived. The Philistines had captured many towns between Ekron and Gath, but they had to give all of them back. Israel took back the territory near those towns from the control of the Philistines. During that time, Israel and the Amorites were friendly toward each other. Samuel continued to lead Israel all the days of his life. From year to year, he traveled from Bethel to Gilgal in, to Mizpah. He served Israel as judge in all those places, he, but he always went back to Ramah. That's where his home was. He served Israel as judge there too, and he built the altar there to honor the Lord. Chapter 8 When Samuel became old, he appointed his sons as Israel's leaders. The name of his oldest son was Joel. The name of his second son was Abijah. They served as judges at Bishma. But the son but his sons didn't live as he did. They were only interested in making money. 
Receptive money from people who want special favors. They may think that our world appears to be right. So all the elders of Israel gathered together. They came to Samuel at Ramah. They said, You are old. The son still live as you do. So call a king to lead us. We want to keep just like the kings all the, all the other nations have. Samuel was a pleased when they said, Give a king, give us a king to work, to lead us. So he prayed to the Lord. The Lord told him, Listen to everything the people are saying to you. You are not the one they have turned their backs on. I am the one they do not want as they king. We are doing just as they have always done. They have deserted me and said, I will God. Hang on a second. They have done that from the time I brought them up out of Egypt until this day. Now they are deserting you too. Let them have what they want, but give them a strong way. Let them know what the king who rules over them will expect to be done for you. Samuel told the people who were asking him for a king everything the Lord had said. Samuel told them, Here's what the king who rules over you will expect to be done for you. He will take your sons. He will make them serve with his chariots and horses. They will run in front of his chariots. He will choose some of your sons to be commanders of thousands of men. Others, some will be commanders of fifties. Others will have to carry and go base crops. Still others will have to make weapons of war and cards for his chariots. He will also take your daughters. Some will have to make tofu. Others will be forced to cook and bake. You will take away your best fields and vineyards and olive groves. You will give them to his attendants. He will take a tenth of your grain and a tenth of your grapes. You will give it to his officials and attendants. He will also take your male and female servants. He will take your best cow and donkeys. He will use all of, all of them any way he wants to. He will take a tenth of your sheep and goats. You yourself will become his slaves. When that time comes, you will cry out for help because of the king you have chosen. But the Lord will answer you at that time. Despite what Samuel said, the people refused to listen to him. No, they said, we want a king to rule over us. Then we'll be like all the other nations. We'll have a king to lead us. We'll go out. He will go out at the head of our army and fight our battles. Samuel heard everything the people said. He told the Lord about it. The Lord answered, Listen to them. Give them a king. Then Samuel said to the Israelites, Each of you go back to your own town. Chapter 9 There was a man named Kish from the tribe of Benjamin. Kish was a very important person. He was the son of Abiah, the son of Zerah. Zerah was the son of Bechorah, the son of Aphifa from the tribe of Benjamin. Kish had a son named Saul. Saul was a handsome young man. He was more handsome than anyone in Israel. And he was a head taller than anyone else. The donkeys that belonged to Saul's and Father Kish were lost. So Kish spoke to his son Saul. He said, Go and look for the donkeys. Take one of the servants with you. Saul and his servant went through the hill country of Ephraim. They also went through the area around Shalishua. They, but they didn't find the donkeys. So they went on to the area of Shal, but the donkeys weren't there either. Then Saul went through the territory of Benjamin, but they still didn't find the donkeys. When Saul and his servant went to reach the area of Zal, Saul spoke to, his servant, to the servant. He said, come on, let's go back. If we don't, my father will stop thinking about the donkeys. Instead, he will stop worrying about us. But the servant replied, There's a man of God here in Ramah. 
you all have a lot of respect for me. Everything you need to say is comes true. Let's go and see him now. Perhaps he'll tell us which way to go. So I said to a servant, if we go to see him, to see the man, what can we give him? There isn't any food in our sacks. We don't have a gift for the man of God. So what can we give him? The servant answered to all again. Look, he said, I've got a tenth of an ounce of silver. I'll give it to the man of God. Then maybe he'll tell us which way to go. And Israel prophets used to be called seers. So if anyone wanted to ask God advice, they would say, Come on, let's go to the seer. Saul said to his son, That's a good idea. Come on, let's go and ask the seer. So they started out for the town where the man of God lived. They were going up the hill toward the town. Along the way, they met some young women who were coming out to get water from the well. So one of his servants asked them, Is the sea here? Yes, he is, they answered. In fact, he's just up ahead of me. So hurry along. He's just come into our town today. The people are going to offer a sacrifice at the high place where they worship. As soon as you enter the town, you'll find him. He'll be there until he goes out to the high place to eat. The people won't start eating until he gets there. He must bless the sacrifice first. After that, those who are invited will eat. So go on up. You should find him there just about now. They went up to the town. As they were entering it, they saw Samuel. He was coming toward them. He was on his way up to the high place. The Lord has spoken to Saul. Has spoken to Samuel the day before Saul came. He said, "About this time tomorrow, I'll send you a man. He's from the land of Benjamin. Anoint him to be the king of my people Israel. He will save them from the power of my Philistines, of the Philistines. I have seen how much my people are suffering. Their cry for help has reached me. That when Samuel saw a man." Come Toward him. The Lord said to Samuel again, He said, He is the man I told you about. His name is Saul. He will govern my people. Saul approached Samuel at the gate of the town. He asked Samuel, Can you please show me the seer's house? I'm the seer, Samuel replied. Go on up to the high place ahead of me. I want you and your son to eat with me today. Tomorrow morning I'll tell you what's on your mind. They are not send you on your way. Don't worry about the donkeys you lost three days ago. They've already been found. I heard you all the Israelites want you and your father's whole family. So I answered, but I'm from the tribe of Benjamin. It's the smallest tribe in Israel. And my family group is the least important in the whole tribe of Benjamin. So why are you saying that to me? Then Samuel brought Saul and his servant into the room where they would be eating. He seated them at the head of the table. About 30 people had been invited. Samuel said to the cup, The greater piece I gave, of me I gave you. It's the one I told you to put to one side. So the cook went and got a choice piece of fly. He said it in front of Saul. Samuel said, Here's what we get for you. Eat it. It was put to one side. Of for you for the special case. We saved it for you ever since I invited the guests. And so ate with Samuel that day. They came down from the high place um, to the town. After that, Sam Samuel talked with Saul on the roof of Samuel's house. The next day they got up and about the time the sun was rising. Samuel called out to Saul on the roof. He said, get ready. I'll send you, then I'll send you on your way. So Saul got ready. And he and Samuel went outside together. 
As they were on their way down to the edge of town, Samuel spoke to Saul. He said, Tell the servant to go ahead of us. So the servant went on ahead. Then Samuel continued, Stay here for a while. I'll give you a message from God. Then Samuel took a bottle of olive oil. He put it on Saul's head and kissed him. He said, The Lord has anointed you to be the king of his people. When you leave me today, you'll meet two men. They will be near Rachel's tomb at Sal's on the border of Benjamin. They'll say to you, The donkeys you have with before have been found. Now your father has stopped thinking about them. Instead, he's worried about you. He's asking, What can I do to find my son? You'll go on from Selza until you come to the large tree at Tabor. Three men will meet you there. They'll be on their way up to Bethel to worship God. One of them will be carrying three young goats. Another will be carrying three loaves of bread. A third will be carrying a bottle of wine. There will be a bottle made out of animal skin. The male will be They'll offer you two loaves of bread. You will accept the loaves from them. After that, you will go to Gibeah of God. Some Philistine soldiers are stationed there. As you approach the town, you will meet a group of prophets. They will be coming down from the high place where they worship. People will be playing lyres, tambourines, flutes and harps at the head of the group. The prophets will be prophesying. The Spirit of the Lord will come powerfully on you. Then you will prophesy along with them. You will become a different person. All these things will happen. Then do what you want to do. God is with you. So go, go down ahead of me to Gilgal. You can be sure that I will come down to you there. I will come and sacrifice my offerings and pray to offering. But you must wait there for seven days until I come to you. Then I'll tell you what to do. I saw all turn to leave Samuel. God changed Saul hearts. All these things happened that day. When Saul and his servant arrived at Gibeah, a group of prophets met Saul. Then the Spirit of God came powerfully on it. He prophesied along with them. Those who had known souls before saw him prophesy with the prophet. They asked one another, What has happened to the son of Kish? Is Saul also one of the prophets? The man who lived in Gibeah answered, Yes, he is. In fact, he's their leader. That's why people say, Is Saul also one of the prophets? After Saul was helped to prophesy, he went to the high place to worship. Later, Saul's uncle spoke to him and his servant. He asked, Where have you been? Looking for the donkey, Saul said. But we couldn't find them. So he went to Samuel. Saul's uncle said, Tell me what Samuel said to you. So he told us the donkeys have been found. But Saul didn't tell his uncle that Samuel had said he would become king. Samuel sent a message to the Israelites. He told them to meet with the Lord at Mizpah. He said to them, The Lord is the God of Israel. He says, Israel, I brought you up out of Egypt. Hi. I save you from Israel. The Lord is the God of Israel. He says, Israel, I brought you up out of Egypt. I saved you from their power. I also saved you from the power of all the kingdoms that had treated you badly. But now you have turned your backs on your God. He saved you out of all your trouble and suffering. He inspired that you have said, You refused to this place of King over us. So now gather together to meet with you. Do it tribe by tribe and family by family group. Then Samuel had each tribe of Israel come forward. The tribe of Benjamin was chosen by casting lots. Next he had the tribe of Benjamin come forward. Family group, grand family group. Matri's group was chosen. 
Finally, Saul was sad that Kish was chosen. But when people looked for him, they realized he wasn't there. They needed more help from the Lord. So they asked him, Has the man come here yet? The Lord said, Yes. He had hidden himself among the supplies. So they ran over there and brought him out. When he stood up, the people saw that he was a head taller than any of them. Samuel spoke to all the people. He said, Look at the man the Lord has chosen. There isn't anyone like him among all the people. Then the people shouted, May the king live a long time. Samuel explained to the people the rights and duties of the king who ruled over them. He wrote them down in the book. He placed it in front of the Lord in the holy tent. Then he sent the people away. He sent each of them to their own homes. Saul also went to his house in Gideon. Some brave men whose hearts God had touched were with Saul. But some people who wanted to stir up trouble said, How could this fellow save us? They looked down at him. They didn't give him any gifts. Saul kept quiet about it. Proverbs 18. Hang on, Proverbs 19. It is better to be poor and live without blame than to be forced and to twist words around. Getting excited about something without knowledge isn't good. It's even worse to be in a hurry and miss the way. A person that is for access to their life, but their heart is angry with the law. Wealth brings many friends, but even the closest friend of a poor person abandons them. A dishonest witness will be punished, and whoever pulls out lies will not go free. Many try to win the favor of rulers, and everyone is afraid is the friend of a poor person who gives gifts. People are avoided. Poor people are avoided by their whole family. Their friends avoid them even more. The poor person runs after their friend, after his friends to beg for help, but they can't be found. Anyone who gets wisdom loves life. Anyone who values understanding will soon succeed. A dishonest witness will be punished, and those who pour out lies will die. It is just proper for a bold person to live in great company. And it's much worse when the slave rules over princes. A person's wisdom makes the patient. They will be honored if they forgive someone who sins against them. A king with anger is like a lion's wolf. But a favor is like dew on the grass. A foolish child is climb his wind. A nagging wife is like the thing that never stops. You will receive houses and wealth from your parents. But a wise wife is given by the Lord. A girl who doesn't want to work sleeps his wife away. And a person who refuses to work goes hungry. Those who keep commandments keep their lives. But those who don't care how they live will die. A girl who is kind to poor people. Then still, God will reward them for what they've done. Treat your children, because they're their son. Don't do anything to bring about their death. <coughs> a person with a bad temper, temper must pay for it. If you save them, you'll have to save them. You'll have to do it again. This is to advice and a separate correction. In the end, you'll be counted among those who are wise. A person may have plans in their heart, but the Lord's purpose wins out in the end. Everyone longs for love that never, ne that never fails. It is better to be poor than to be alive. Having respect for the Lord leads to life, and then you will be content and free from trouble. A person who doesn't want to work leaves his hand in the dish. He won't even bring it back up to his mouth. If you're with a person who hates one of others, how many people will learn to be wise? If you reward those who already understand what is right, they will gain even more knowledge. A girl who walks their father and drives out their mother is like a child who brings shame and dishonor. My son, if you stop listening to what I teach, you will wander away from the words of God. <laughs> a dishonest witness makes fun of what is right. The mass of those who do wrong gulp down evil. 
Those who make fun of others will be judged. Foolish people will be punished. Psalm 108. God, my heart feels secure. I'll sing and make music to you with all my heart. The harp and lyre, wake up. I want to see you make music before the sun rises. Lord, I will praise you among the nations. I will sing about you among the people of the earth. Great is your love. It is higher than the heavens. Your truth reaches to the skies. God, may you be honored above the heavens. May your glory be over the whole earth. Save us. Help us with your powerful right hand, so that those you love may be saved. God has spoken for this temple. He said, I will win this battle. I will win the battle. Then I will divide up the land around Shechem. I'll divide up the valley of Sekel. Gilead belongs to me, and so does the land of Nahan and Madison. Ephraim is, like, is the strongest tribe. It is like a helmet for my head. Jesus, the royal tribe. It, it is like a rule scepter. Moab serves me like one who washes my feet. I toss my sandal on an antidote to show I, that I earned it. I shout to Philster, what, I shout to Philster that I am what the bout. Who will bring me to the city that has higher walls around it? Who will lead me to the land of Eden? God, isn't it you even though you dare turn away from us? Isn't it you even though you don't need our armies into our people? Help us against our enemies. The help people do is about to anything. With your help, we will win the battle. We, you will walk all over our enemies. Now that's done, I shall now do the Lord's Prayer. Please bow your heads. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we mercy forgive our debtors. May us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye.